I want to talk to you today about staying positive toward yourself. The most important relationship you have is the relationship with yourself. Too many people don't like who they are. They focus on their faults and weaknesses. They relive their mistakes and failures. They wish they were different. If they were taller, had a better personality, looked like their cousin. Instead of accepting themselves as a masterpiece, they're critical toward themselves. And they wonder why they're not happy, why they don't have good relationships. It's because they don't like themselves. If you don't get along with you, you're not going to get along with other people. The best thing you can do for your family, for your friends, is be good to you. Be kind to you. Be merciful to you. Be forgiving to you. Be loving to you. You're good to others. Why aren't you good to you? You don't criticize your friend. Why are you criticizing you? You compliment your coworker. When's the last time you complimented yourself? You admire their talent. Why don't you admire your talent? Start being good to you. That's not being selfish. That's not arrogant. That's loving yourself. Too many people go through life against themselves, feeling wrong on the inside. I heard someone say, I discovered the enemy, it was me. Are you your enemy? Are you defeating yourself, limiting your dreams, sabotaging your relationships, all because you don't like you? You have enough people and circumstances against you, don't be against yourself. When you wake up in the morning, don't lie in bed and think of everything wrong with you. What you don't like about your looks, relive your mistakes. Why didn't I finish college? I should be more disciplined. I lost my temper yesterday. Instead of focusing on what's wrong with you, start focusing on what's right with you. You may have weaknesses. You've made mistakes. We all have. But there's a lot more right with you than there is wrong with you. Dwelling on the negative doesn't help you to do better. Beating yourself up for past mistakes doesn't move you forward. The better you feel about yourself, the better you'll do. The more you like yourself, the further you'll go. You can't give away what you don't have. If you're in turmoil on the inside, mad at yourself, critical, condemned, that's what you have to give. If you're hard on yourself, you'll be hard on others. If you don't forgive yourself, you won't forgive others. If you don't get along with you, how can you get along with your family? The best thing you can do is start being for you. When you love yourself, then you can love others. When you're kind to yourself, then you can be kind to others. It starts with you. Well, Joel, I have all these faults, these weaknesses. Once I overcome, once I learn to control my temper, be more disciplined, quit saying things that I shouldn't, then I won't be down on myself. If you're waiting to perform perfectly before you feel good about who you are, you'll be waiting your whole life. You have to accept yourself while you're in the process of changing. You have to own your own happiness. Uh, take it away from other people demanding that they make you happy. Your kids are not going to make you happy. Your spouse is not going to make you happy. A big house is not going to make you happy. Own your own happiness and be responsible for doing those things that bring joy into your own heart independently of life and people and money and all of that stuff. Right. It doesn't necessarily give you a happiness. You have to take responsibility of that peace and that joy that lives inside of your heart and not inside of your stuff. The second thing that I think people need to do is challenge their own story because people torment themselves by how they see their life. They've told themselves a story as if it were the truth when it is really a perspective truth. And sometimes you've narrated a story that you beat yourself to death with. Challenge your own story. Change the way you talk to yourself about who you are and what happened to you and what you're going to do in your life. You, you wrote the script. Change the story. The third thing that, that, that I think is very important is to enjoy the journey, not the destination. A lot of us delay our happiness. When I get to this level, when I get my degree, when I get the kids, when I get married, I'm going to be happy. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the whole step, the whole process. Every day that you get up to strive for whatever it is you're after. You don't celebrate when you get to the finish line. Celebrate all along the way. The other point is make relationships count. 
making your relationships count because everything is about relationships. You're, first of all, your relationship with God, you're, you're, that's a very important thing to have. Because as long as you know that there's somebody in charge, you don't have to bear the brunt of the responsibility and the weight of what's going on in your life. Yeah. You can talk to the boss. Okay. Yeah. Number two, enjoy your relationship with yourself. If you don't like you, it makes it hard for me to like. <laughs> enjoy your relationship with yourself. And then anybody else who comes in, they enter into a party you already started. And then the, the relationship with your kids. It's a relationship with your spouse, the relationship with your friends, taking time to enjoy the relationships because there, there is no fruit. Nature teaches us that there is no fruit without relationships. You cannot be fruitful by yourself in business, in home, Nothing. in life, in church. I don't care what it is. You are no more than the relationships you surround yourself with and make sure that those are good ones. The fifth thing that I really ascribe to is balance work with play. You can't do all of either one and be successful. And to those who much is given, much is required. And if you work really hard, you're a really diligent person, make sure that you do some play to balance your life out. If you play real hard, but you don't work very much, you're going to be fun, but you're going to be hungry. You can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. You can coat your mind from negativity. It's a real simple exercise to do. I do it every morning before I walk out the door. So I walk out as a positive person. You know, I get tired sometimes. That's different from being negative because I get mentally drained from my job at times. But to coat your mind from negativity, the way you can put a coating around your mind is with one simple thing, gratitude. Gratitude erases negativity. I'm gonna show you how this works. If you wake up in the morning and you start having negative thoughts, man, this ain't my day. I woke up on the wrong side of bed. I'm tripping. I just don't feel myself. Every time you feel in the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, stop. Just stop for a second and start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Not everything you want, everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. The fact that you can walk. That's a blessing. The fact that you woke up, that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go somewhere and get yourself something to eat, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go and turn the key and call someplace home, that's another blessing. The ability to dream is a blessing. The, the, the fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you're beautiful, that's another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. And I'm just talking to you, I don't even know you. I could give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now. I don't even know you. Start coating your mind with gratitude. It'll change everything for you. Step number one, decide to develop the habit right now. The habit of focusing on what's right in your world instead of what's wrong. The habit of focusing on what you do have instead of what you don't have in a situation. And as basic as that is, and as well as you know it, you've got to make it a habit. Because those habits form the chain of your ultimate character, of who you become and how you end up living your life. We've got to condition ourselves, because if we don't, we'll go back to the automatic state that most people live in in today's society. All you want to do is establish the habit of noticing what you do have instead of what you don't have. Noticing what's great about a situation versus what's not great. Focusing on solution instead of problems. That's what changes your life. Here's key number two. Instead of judging yourself and others, decide, remember these are decisions, decide right now to become curious instead of judgmental. But remember, when you find fault in other people, when you start noticing constantly how they've wronged you, how this person is not good enough, or they're too egotistical, they're too proud, or they don't really care about people, as soon as you start judging other people, you just got to remember something. If you start judging other people, you're going to also start judging yourself intensely. If you're angry at other people, there's a very good chance you're angry at yourself as well. Maybe you need to perceive more and judge less. Maybe instead of finding fault with other people, without really thinking about what they've gone through to be where they are this day, Maybe we can get really curious about what's making this person be in the state they're in. Or what's the motivation behind this person's anger? Remember, we gotta judge less, perceive more. We gotta get curious. Instead of living in a society where we're so afraid, so afraid to believe in anything or anyone that we believe in nothing at all and we lose our power, our power of positive thinking. We try to protect ourselves from things we maybe not even need to protect ourselves from. 
free yourself from the disease of making others wrong and you'll free yourself from the disease of making yourself wrong. You have a lot more energy to create solution instead of problems. It's part of the power of positive thinking instead of falling for the destructive power of negative thinking. Remember, get curious instead of judgmental. Here's key number three. If you really want to develop the power of positive thinking as a habit, as a lifestyle, as a strategy for success, then decide right now to find something to appreciate from any seemingly negative person or situation and develop the habit of giving compliments. See, if you really want to have some more positive feelings in your life, you got to keep focusing on what's right. You got to get curious. And most importantly, you got to find something to appreciate even in the tough times. Because in reality, as we've talked about so often before, the toughest times in your life sometimes provide you with the real resources to change your life. So what we've got to do is find something to appreciate, not someday when things work out. We've got to appreciate where we are right now. Choosing you and not being guilty about it. The pursuit of your own happiness is enough of a reason to make a major change. One of the primary things I learned is that relationships, they define us. When they're going great, we feel great. When they're in breakdown, we feel like nothing's going right. What I realize is that if I calibrate, if I get on my own vibration for Lisa, and I understand what does it mean to accept me? What does it mean to own my life? What does it mean to um, be at peace with everything about me? My good, my bad, my happy, my sad, my right, my wrong, and everything in between. Like when I can love my light and love my darkness, when I settle in who I am, and I could feel full in my esteem when others have a tendency to hmm, not accept me, it lands a little easier. I remember there was a time in my life when all I wanted was for people to accept me. But I realized that I needed them to accept me and love me because I wasn't really accepting Lisa. I wasn't really loving Lisa to my fullest. I want you all to stay true to the most real, most sincere, most authentic parts of yourselves. I want you to ask those basic questions. Who do you want to be? What inspires you? How do you want to give back? And then I want you to take a deep breath and trust yourselves to chart your own course and make your mark on the world. The number one thing you have to do is to work on yourself and to fill yourself up and keep your cup full. Keep yourself full. Now, I used to be afraid of that. I used to be afraid, particularly from people who say, oh, she, she's so full of herself. Mm, she's so full of herself. And now I embrace it. I, I, I consider it a compliment that I am full of myself. Because you only when you're full, I'm full, I'm overflowing. My cup runneth over. I have so much, I have so much to offer and so much to give. And I am not afraid of honoring myself. You know, it's miraculous when you think about it. Trust yourselves to chart your own course and make your mark on the world. Maybe it feels like you're supposed to go to law school. But what you really want to do is teach little kids. Maybe your parents are expecting you to come back home after you graduate, but you're feeling a pull to travel the world. I, I want you to listen to those thoughts. I want you to act with both your mind, but also your heart. And no matter what path you choose, I want you to make sure it's you choosing it and not someone else. If you fully love and show up for you first, then you're less impacted, you're less disrupted when someone doesn't embrace you the way you believe you should be embraced. See, I realize that we are, we are iron for others, iron sharpens iron. We're also triggers for others. There's a thousand reasons why someone might reject you. My grandmother says, man's rejection is God's protection. So not everyone that's in your space should be in your space. And sometimes people have to opt out on your behalf to help you out. How many times have you been in a friendship or a relationship and it ended 
and maybe not immediately after it ended, but somewhere in the next 30, 60, 90 days, a year, maybe two years, you took a deep breath. <sighs> I actually feel more relief that that relationship has transitioned. Whether it's a relationship with a job, a friend, an ex, whatever. So while we don't want to have rejection in our life, I say all rejection isn't bad. And sometimes it's not rejection, it's simply transition. It's simply completion. You know, I, I realized that I wanted everyone to love me. But when I began to love Lisa, I stopped having to manage or having the desire to manage how other people like me. Your job is to wake up each day and like you. Now, when people reject you, um, there's something that they're triggered by. When people reject you, there's something in you that's occurring. So if you're finding that you're being rejected in different environments and you're the common denominator, rejection in some cases is feedback. If someone's giving you feedback, um, multiple people are giving you feedback in the way they're embracing you or letting you go or in the way that they're sharing how you show up, listen to the feedback. One of the hardest things for me to do was to hear consistent feedback. Lisa, you're stubborn. Lisa, you're stubborn. Lisa, you're stubborn. I defended for years. I am not the average Taurus the bull, though I'm a Taurus. I'm not. I'm not stubborn. And then I kept getting the same feedback. And I realized you are stubborn. You can be. You can be rigid because I kept getting that feedback. So if you find that you're getting the same feedback from multiple people and they're not corralling, and, 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 you know, running a mutiny against you. They're really different environments, different people. Then listen to the feedback because what I love about feedback, even though it stings, feedback is feeding your future possibility. I'll say that again. You might want to write that down. Feedback is feeding your future possibility. If you choose to take the feedback and embrace it and own it and allow it to elevate your elevate you and influence your future decisions, then it can help you to evolve. It can help you to continue to become the person you're evolving into. So rejection could be a form of feedback. And when you talk about getting, being rejected, particularly by women, again, remember we trigger each other. You know, I used to walk into a room and I could see the energy shifting, but I also walked into the room and I was looking for if the energy shifted. Now I walk into the room and I look for the person that's going to love and embrace me. I walk in a room, I own my light, I own my greatness, but I also own my humility. And I look for the light that's reflecting me. And I tap into and I'm drawn to that light. And anything else in the room that's not light, that's not love, it can coexist with me, but it doesn't get to influence me. Choosing happiness for yourself is what truly allows you to begin bringing happiness to other people. So during the holiday season, we all are being, we've already been conditioned to give and give and give and give and give and give and give to others, but it's important to make time for yourself too. That care is the gift you give to yourself. Being able to choose what's right for you and knowing when it is right. Give yourself exactly what you need. You're not looking for other people to validate you. You're looking for other people to affirm, to stand in alignment with you, with what you know to be so, but you're not placing your, you're not placing your stock and your self value in the hands of your boss, your relationship, your children, your family, that you wake up each morning and you say, and I've said this before, I am enough today. I'm pleased with who I am. Before you start the day, I always say that my job is to like Lisa first. Before anything that occurs today, my job is to like Lisa, to know that I'm gonna bring the best version of me in every situation I can. To like me before anyone on Facebook likes me and to know that I'm okay. What does it mean to be everything to you? That's not an arrogant statement. It's not a place of self-indulgence. It's to recognize that self-care is not selfish. It's to recognize that you can only serve others from a full cup and that it's your job to fill yourself up. Fill yourself up with positive thinking. That's why you're here. Fill yourself up with new possibility. That's why you're here. Fill yourself up with new opportunities. Fill yourself up with having the best people on your planet. Loving yourself enough 
to remove unhealthy, toxic people out of your life. People who love you don't treat you badly. Love doesn't hurt. It's supposed to feel good. Ladies, take the blame off yourself. Men are really, really good at that. Making you think something wrong with you. <laughs> oh, real men don't really operate like that. But you got so many men out here from these broken homes. You got so many men out here that ain't had a father figure. That didn't tell them what real men really do. That real men buckle down. That real men meet a woman and put her on a pedestal and treat her like a queen. Real men get taught this. When you don't have a man that's been taught that, you're dealing with a man that don't have all the qualities of manhood. I just wanted to highlight that abuse is unacceptable and I lived it for 10 years with my abuser, my then husband, and it's something that I felt very ashamed about. And when you're in an abusive relationship, you don't want anybody to know that. It's very embarrassing and you feel very riddled with shame and guilt. And when I left my abuser, I was, I was wanting to speak about it loud and proud, like this is not okay and I'm one of the lucky ones I got out. And it took me 10 years to find the courage to actually leave that behind. If you don't get the lesson, it's a benevolent universe. It will come back wearing a different <laughs> pair of pants in a different form. It will show up again to see if you really yes. got it. So yes. what is the great lesson for us? I mean, it really is what Oprah's saying, which is that when you get a red flag or a, I say, a caution, a yellow blinking light, don't let it go to red. <laughs> get it when it's yellow, when the caution is, is there that's saying something doesn't feel right. Check in with your friend. Ask them what they think about who you're with. And I'll tell you something, we don't want to do that. We don't want to ask our friends. And I always say this, if you can't, if you're living a life and having a relationship that you can't tell your friends about what's happening in your relationship, something's wrong. If you've got to keep the secret, something's wrong. It means because I don't want you to know that he's calling me a bee. He doesn't really mean that. He only does that when he drinks too much. Mm -hmm. um, he's not really an alcoholic. That only is because he was stressed last week. Well, last week turns into every kind of day. So part of it is, again, gathering a community, and I call it a truth commission. I have a truth commission in my life. Folks who will tell me the truth even when I don't want to hear it. And we all need that. Yeah. Yeah, I have it too. You know, we need somebody who will say, you know what, that is like not, I mean, I, I have you're it. out of your mind right I now. If you've been in a relationship for 12 bad years, do you want to do 12 more? Stop collecting red flags. What y'all saving them for? Once you get so many red flags, y'all ought to sew them all together, tie them around your neck and fly your ass out of there. <laughs> Think of all the times you let a man treat you badly or someone, your friends, walk all over you. How many times have you let hurtful words or criticism crush you? Well, I was uh, one of those people who was raised not to have a lot of self-esteem. Uh, and I know anybody else who was physically uh, violated as a child, as I was, uh, got whippings every day. The lesson of a whipping, the lesson of being heavily disciplined with violence is that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough. And so it takes a long time to get a sense of self-worth and self-value. And so I was in my 20s doing what everybody in their 20s does and looking for love in all the wrong places and looking to be validated by somebody else's view of who I was and wanting them to say, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yes, you're okay, you're, you're okay. And I've done some really embarrassing, ridiculous, crazy ass things over the years, holding onto the bumper of a Datsun Z like I could actually keep him from pulling off. And I remember one time he had left and slammed the door on my hand. And I had, just like a lot of women, had the barrier of, well, you, you can say anything to me, but you cannot hit me. You cannot hit me. He didn't hit me, but the door slammed on my hand. And I thought, well, that's coming close. That's coming very close. And I remember the door slamming on my hand, falling to the floor. And in front of me was a mirror. 
and I saw myself on the floor with my hand now bruised and thinking, I have become the woman that I watched my cousin Alice be my whole life as a kid. The only difference is that I'm battered in spirit and the next step is going to be, who knows? So a woman that I never imagined myself to be and I got to figure out how to get myself out of this. And that was the beginning of the lesson, which is I'm hoping happens to you tonight. Frequent breakups and makeups, high highs and low lows. As tension rises, so does volatility. Tearful, frustrated fights followed by emotional makeups. Hateful and hurtful comments like, you're worthless, I'm not even sure why I'm with you. Followed quickly by apologies and promises it will never happen again. By this point, you've been so conditioned to this relationship roller coaster that you may not realize how unhealthy and maybe even dangerous your relationship has become. It can be really hard to see when unhealthy love turns towards abuse. But it's fair to say that the more of these markers your relationship might have, the more unhealthy and maybe dangerous your relationship could be. And if your instinct is to break up and leave, which is advice so many of us give our friends when they're in unhealthy relationships, that's not always the best advice. Time of breakup can be a real trigger for violence. If you fear you might be headed towards abuse or in abuse, you need to consult with experts to get the advice on how to leave safely. But it's not just about romantic relationships and it's not just about violence. Understanding the signs of unhealthy love can help you audit and understand nearly every relationship in your life. For the first time, you might understand why you're disappointed in a friendship or why every interaction with a certain family member leaves you discouraged and anxious. You might even begin to see how your own intensity and jealousy is causing problems with colleagues at work. Understanding is the first step to improving. And while you can't make every unhealthy relationship healthy, some you're gonna have to leave behind, you can do your part every day to do relationships better. And here's the exciting news. It's actually not rocket science. Open communication, mutual respect, kindness, patience. We can practice these things every day. And while practice will definitely make you better, I have to promise you it's also not going to make you perfect. I do this for a living. Every day I think and talk about healthy relationships and still I do unhealthy things. Just the other day as I was trying to shuttle my four kids out the door amidst quarreling, squabbling and complaints about breakfast, I completely lost it. With an intentionally angry edge, I screamed, everybody just shut up and do what I say. You are the worst. I'm going to take away screen time and dessert and anything else you could possibly ever enjoy in life. <laughs> Anybody been there? <laughs> Volatility. Belittling. My oldest son turned around and looked at me and said, Mom, that's not love. <laughs> For a minute, I really wanted to kill him for calling me out, trust me. But then I gathered myself and I thought, you know what, I'm actually proud. I'm proud that he has a language to make me pause. I want all of my kids to understand what the bar should be for how they're treated and to have a language and a voice to use when that bar is not met versus just accepting it. The purpose in this life is to fail. But it's not just to fail. It's to fail and overcome the obstacle that made you fall. That means get back up right now. If you're down in a rut, hurting, if you've been betrayed, if you've been fired, if you failed a test if your marriage ended in a divorce if you lost a child or a loved one now is the time for you to get back up on your feet and go fight life again this world isn't going to care to you so you must give all you have in order for you to live a happy life. Yes, we have those ups and downs. 
But in the end, your success, your happiness, your greatness comes from within. You are the only person that can encourage you to get back up. Look in the mirror right now and tell yourself, I will fight through this. I will make it and I won't give up. Life, you thought you had me down. But this is the moment I change my mind. I won't let anything keep me down. Every day, you have another opportunity to be and do what you were meant to do on this earth. This decision you're making right now will determine your outcome of your tomorrow. We don't have control over yesterday, but this decision that you're making right now will push you, will purge you, will drive you to have that fire down inside. If you're a father, go and love your children. If you're a teacher, go and teach your class. If you're a coach, coach your team to a championship. If you're a fighter, get back up and keep fighting. Because you are the only one that can fight this battle. I'm not saying the battle's going to be easy. I'm not saying every day you're going to wake up wanting to fight. But you just got to push through those hard times in order to make it to the good times. Your hurt, your pain, will drive you to maintain a successful life. And that's what this life is about. Pushing to the next moment to fulfill the greatness inside of you. Life is hard. That's what life is. And these challenges, these challenges that you face, they're going to do their best to take you down. Do not let them stand up, dig in, line up those problems and confront them, face them, fight them. Do not let them bring you down. In fact, in fact, let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you stronger. Let the adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. So, so in the future, you look back at these struggles and you say to them, thank you. You made me better. Behind every moment of adversity in your life, there is a blessing and a lesson. Every moment of adversity has those two things. Pain always leaves a gift. I want to talk to you today about inviting God in to your difficulties. Most of the time we're praying, God, get me out of this challenge. Get me out of this trouble at work. Get me out of this financial setback. There's nothing wrong with that. But before you get out, you have to invite God in. Sometimes the miracle is not in getting out. It's in what God is going to do in the situation. And instead of just praying, God, get me out. Why don't you start praying, God, come in to this hospital room while I take the treatment. Come in to this trouble at work where the people aren't fair. Come into this anxiety that I'm dealing with. What's more powerful than God bringing you out is when God comes in and begins to change things. He comes in and gives you favor despite who's trying to push you down. He comes in and gives you strength that you can't explain. Grace to outlast what should stop you. I know you're right here with me. 
You are ordering my steps. And at the right time, you'll get me to where I'm supposed to be. You don't have to fight everything. Live upset. Can't sleep at night. That happens when you're only focused on getting out. God is waiting to come in. When you ask him in, you're saying, God, don't just change the circumstances. Change me. Help me to not just go through this situation. Help me to grow through it. Help me to learn. Increase my faith. Let my character come up higher. If God delivered us out of everything instantly, we would never reach our highest potential. Now, don't be discouraged because God didn't keep you out of the fire. God doesn't stop every negative situation. He uses adversities to move us into our purpose. We would never know his power if we were never thrown into a fire, so to speak. You wouldn't know he was a healer if you never had an illness. We wouldn't know he could move mountains if we never faced big obstacles. Now quit complaining about what you're up against. It's not a surprise to God. The enemy may have turned up the fire seven times hotter than normal. They didn't do that without God's permission. God is in control not just of your life, he's in control of your enemies. Instead of complaining about the fire, start inviting him into the fire. When he's with you, you cannot be defeated. You and God are a majority. He is a supernatural God. He's not limited by the fire, by the floods, by the famines. What should take you out cannot stop your destiny. Instead of complaining about everything that you don't like, if you'll recognize that God allowed the difficulty, I'm not saying that he sent it, but he allowed it because he had a purpose. And the purpose is not so you can live miserable, worried and afraid. His purpose is to show his glory through you. It's so other people can see his power and favor on your life. Without great test, you won't have a great testimony. Without big battles, we won't see big victories. When you can say, God, this is what I'm believing for. This is what I'm hoping will happen. But God, even if it doesn't work out my way, I'm still going to give you praise. I'm still going to be good to others. I'm still going to pursue my dreams. That attitude gets God's attention. You're saying, God, not my will, but let your will be done. Instead of praying, God, get me out of this situation, I'm asking you to start praying, God, come into this situation. Help me to have a good attitude. Help me to do the right thing when the wrong thing is happening. When you're in the fire, you can't complain. Be discouraged. God, it's not fair. Try a different approach. God, come into this fire with me. God, help me to do the right thing. Change me where I need to change. Burn off things that are holding me back. You have to shine where you are. Have a song of praise when you could be complaining. Keep a smile on your face when you should be discouraged. I know it's not easy, but keep reminding yourself the creator of the universe, the most high God is right there with you.